Hi everyone and welcome to the Foxtrot Suite version 8 webinar. Uh, my name is Aaron Boltman. I'm the Foxtrot product manager. I've been here for eight years, so almost a year for each version. Let's go ahead and get started. We've added two actions. One is the create list action and the delete list action. Well, what does this do? Well, simply put, it allows you to create a list. The list is stored inside of Foxtrot 1 directly in your project and Foxtrot is capable of pulling a certain type of list. For example, Foxtrot can pull a list of all the file names in a directory. Okay, well why is that useful? Well, a lot of times we see customers and prospects who are looking at our technology, they have a need to go through maybe hundreds if not thousands of files in a directory. Perhaps these are a list of Excel workbooks that they need to go through and harvest information out of. Well, I put together kind of a simple example that will demonstrate this but before I get to that I also want to talk about our looping actions because these two sets of features can be used together to make some pretty powerful scripts very very easily so you can create a list using the create list action and then you can loop through that list using the new looping actions as you see the looping actions provide a wide variety of ways that you can very easily create a loop uh, advance the loop, rewind the loop, and even exit the loop. So n you no longer have to make a variable that's your counter that keeps track of where you're at in these loops. Um, in past versions you'd have to have a label and a go to label as kind of a way to build these loops. Well we have loop specific actions now that just make it that much easier. And I've got a couple looping examples here. So in this example you see I have a loop here and I'm gonna kinda scroll down and show you where all these looping actions live under the loop section you see that we've got all these different loop um, helpers down here and so what I've done is I've created a loop and I've set this to run the loop a specific number of times and I want it to run ten times and then you'll see inside of the loop there's things that I need to perform and I even have a, a sub loop or a child loop inside that's gonna that's gonna run. So this is a very simple loop. It doesn't actually accomplish anything. It's, it doesn't do anything to any application. But I want to just walk you through this and demonstrate this looping capability. So as we enter the loop the first time, you'll see that as soon as the loop action is run, you'll it'll tell you what loop number you're on. So I'm on loop one of ten. It's very very simple. This information is tracked automatically by Foxtrot. There's no need for a variable or, or custom tracking the way that you'd have to do it in the past. So Foxtrot's then going to proceed down to the child loop and it's going to kick off this loop. And this loop is set to run three times, so now that's in loop one of three. When it gets to the end loop, what is it going to do? Well, you probably guessed it. It's going to go back to the top of that loop and now it's starting loop two of three. So here's loop 3 of 3. And now since this inner loop is done, it's naturally going to end and go out. You'll see that the loop number goes away because that loop is no longer in play. And then it, when it gets down to the bottom of the, the bigger loop, it's going to go back up to the top and start iteration 2 of 10. So now on iteration 2, it's going to go in again into the child loop. And you can kind of see how this is flowing through it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect when you're building these loops and let's say if you were down at this level and for any reason I needed to jump out of all of the loops the exit all loops action is very handy you do that and you'll see that the yellow arrow jumps completely out of the loops so these these um, loop actions are, are pretty self explanatory uh, the name says exactly what it does next loop means it goes to the next loop previous loop repeat loop restart loop and the help documentation gives some examples and explain these in more detail so let's go to a more substantial demonstration of these looping actions so now that you understand the looping actions and what they can do I put together an example of a little real-world scenario that you may encounter when I've created a directory on my computer and I filled it with these various workbooks and if I open up one of these workbooks you'll see that inside it's a very simple example of some information 
it's in kind of a form style it's not the typical row column um, grid of data that you might see somewhere else but this is more of a maybe a tax form or a, a deposit statement or a healthcare form or any other type of data that's not structured in rows and columns but rather individual data points that are sprinkled throughout the document so I have one of these files for every one of these customers I've got one for Roy Baker I've got one for uh, David Kratz if I open this up it's the same exact file but with different data so my my business goal with these files is to go into every one of these files harvest out that data and build a single file that that kinda aggregates all of this data together this is a very common need in many organizations we see this uh, probably in at least 10 percent of the projects we work on where we have to deal with lots and lots of files so what I've done is I've built a file template for those of you who've used file templates before you know that this is simply a way to control what gets put into my output file I want my file to contain the first name, middle initial, last name, date of birth, social security, and ID of everyone in all of these different files. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by clearing my report file. I'm using the new create list action here. And if you notice, immediately above the looping action is where these new list actions live and I'm going to edit this so you can see exactly how I built this well I'm creating a list and I'm calling my list my files that's simply representative of the files I need to open here and the type of list I'm building is a file and folder list now you'll notice in this drop down there's currently only one list type available that's because we have plans in the future to provide additional types of lists so for now we're going to create a file and folder list and the items we want to retrieve out of this folder um, are files only we could also retrieve files and folders and also folders only it all depends on what you're trying to do in this case I just want it to go through the files I tell it the directory that contains all my worker files that's what that's how Foxtrot knows where to go to find it and there's a few other options available here but if you notice that these spreadsheets are mixed in uh, kind of sprinkled in with some of these text files uh, these text files are not something I want to work with with this project but I've shown you um, I've done this intentionally for this example because it's very common to need to skip certain types of files we do that through the filter files option and we tell Foxtrot only get the files with this file extension so this will naturally skip anything that doesn't match so all these text files will be completely ignored so now when I double click this create list action it's gonna go ahead and build my list so if I go over to my list view here's my list that was generated automatically by Foxtrot if I open and view this list we'll see that there are nine files that were located in that directory it also includes um, lots of different information that we break down for you here if we scroll to the right we give you everything you'd want to know about those files including the create date time uh, the last time it was access modified um, there's just all kinds of information we provide including file size and gigabytes megabytes kilobytes and bytes so there's lots of things that are available to you when you're dealing with your list so remember keep this in the back of your mind all these different things that are available we will be tapping into those here in a minute so we can see how quickly it'll go through all nine files and done so I'm gonna do that one more time so you can see that again hit run and it's done So if we were to look at the output file, which I had it put on my desktop, we now can see that all the information that was previously located in all those spreadsheets has been collected and entered as an individual row in my final file. So this is an example of how Foxtrot can aggregate your data from multiple files. 
We see people doing this on a daily basis, weekly, monthly basis to produce uh, monthly reports. Um, we have reports of some people that run their script every 15 minutes for the past several years. We've had someone said that they had a script run for two years every 15 minutes without stopping. Pretty impressive stuff.